To break it all down, we're joined here on set by Eric Mandel. He's the director of the Middle East Political Information Network. And Eric, first explain this very sensitive issue. Netanyahu was a guest in the Warsaw Summit in Poland, and he was quoted by the media as saying the Poles cooperated with the Nazis. Why are the Poles so offended by this generalization, and why do they take Netanyahu by the word? So we have to go back to last year where they passed a law, a Holocaust um, censorship law, basically, that if you say that the Poles collaborated, they made it illegal. They actually backtracked making any jail time for it. Um, but Polish death camps, you can't say. They're saying we were the victims. Yes, there were a couple of outliers who were Poles who got involved. But we know that's not the real history. I mean, the real history of what happened is complex. You first had a basically Polish nation pre-World War II that was anti-Semitic. They were devastated by the Nazis. They were both victims and collaborators. They, some did save the Jews. There were more Poles in, in Yad Vashem and, the, and, and righteous um, Gentiles than of any other country, but they also killed Jews. And there are hundreds of thousands of Jews who, had, who, had, who died during the war because the, there were hundreds of thousands of Poles who were part of the Nazi death machine, whether by voluntary or compulsion of, of being there, but they also lost two million people. So it's not so simple. And you have a government there, a nationalistic government, that basically is trying to minimize it. And why I care about it on a personal level is because this is leading to historical revisionism, which is on the path to Holocaust denial. And that's really, um, Yella Peed spoke about this, um, the op one of the opposition leaders, taking advantage of the political scene, what's going on in Israel, uh, for what's going on. But uh, the truth of the matter is this is still a very sensitive topic. So it's, explain the political um, angle of this. Why was it so important for Prime Minister's Netanyahu office to issue a statement right away saying he was misquoted by the media and he spoke of the polls, uh, he, he spoke of the polls and not the, the Polish nation? Right. So it probably was a misquote. Uh, it was a Jerusalem Post report, and it sounded like it was a misquote. Other people heard it in the way Netanyahu said. But what makes this really important? The, there's a Visegrad group that next, in, uh, uh, later this month is going to be meeting in Israel the first time. Who are the Visegrad group? It is uh, Czechs, Poles, um, Hungarians, and um, uh, Slovakians. And they are much more pro-Israel on the Palestinian issue than are the Western Europeans. Within the European Union. Within, yeah. But all these people are within the European Union. In fact, they're all part of NATO. But this is a group in Central Europe that is more sympathetic to, to Israel. But if you look at the complexities here, if you, if the ADL statistics on polls, co contemporary, uh, the contemporaneous poll, 45% of polls have anti-Semitic attitudes. And Israelis, on the flip side, 50% have negative views of polls, but 65% say, let's look to the future, real politique. These are our friends. This is the best friends we could have. Let's see if we have a relationship and let's go forward. But you don't want to have a revisionist history of the past and cover this up. And it's a very sensitive issue. Obviously, Israel... Part of the bill. Also domestically, you mentioned Yair Lapid from the opposition, and Netanyahu was uh, last year highly criticized in Israel for agreeing eventually with, with the Poles to settle down this dispute after the language of the law itself was somewhat softened. Um, the Poles today said that Netanyahu made this remark for political reasons back home. Could this be the case, though? You know, I think he had to say something when he's there about the 3 million Jews died there. 90% of all the Jews died. So it's something you have to say. He went with Pence um, to a memorial in a museum, um, you know, regarding a concentration camp. I mean, so you have to say something like that. But the idea that Poles um, collaborated with Nazis is a fact. Um, but you do have to play it correctly if you want to have relations in this part of the world. And here's my question to you. The Nazi regime had many collaborators in different countries, both individuals and regimes in Europe and the Balkans, of course. But this debate is so intense right now in Poland. Why there? We don't see this happening in other countries or laws of this kind being in deliberations right now in different parliaments across Europe. I think because the Nazi death factory happened in Poland. You have to realize, I'll, I'll play the Polish side here, the Poles were with, looked at as an inferior people by the Nazis. Hundreds of thousands of leaders were killed. They thought they would ethnically cleanse the Poles and bring in Germans into that territory. As Besides the Jews, two million Poles, both soldiers and, and civilians, died, three million Jews. So they do have a claim, but 
way too, there's been with so many pogroms before, during, and after by Poles without German uh, help um, that uh, the German, for example, one of the things the Poles did, there were 20,000 uh, called blue police of the Poles who enforced the anti-Jewish laws for them. There were a lot of willing collaborators that were there. Um, but there were some good people, but it was such a significant amount of anti-Semitism that was there. It's something that's not going away, and it's really important for, for historical truth that we, we don't forget this. So what concerns you the most, Eric, about this entire narrative um, and, and the way it's adopted by the Poles, and maybe we might see it eventually taking place in different countries, and, and it's a narrative different than what many people in Israel have in mind. Historical revisionism, Holocaust denial. Explain this is, term, historical revisionism. Basically, <laughs> people have their own set of facts of what it is, and you know, sort of the you know you can you create um, a narrative that you, your people want to hear. There is a more right-wing government in Poland, a more nationalist group. You have that in Hungary, and they can minimize that Holocaust uh, deny you know the Holocaust of, of their participations. Um, so it is is really troubling. But it's not surprising. And you have to take your friends where you can have them. But Israel still has to have a strong moral fiber and just say, the facts are the facts. And we don't want to let this go for generations. The last of the Holocaust survivors are dying off in the next few years. And for their memory, we really can't forget this. But you can't blame Bibi Netanyahu for wanting to make friends there. Because How important is it for Israel to have friends within the European Union? Very, very important. And he, basically what he's able to do, I think this is really clever, um, he is dividing the European Union, where he has a section of it, the Central Europeans, who are more sympathetic to him, who are not held hostage to the Palestinian intransients, as opposed to um, the, uh, the, the Germans or the French or the English who are. Um, but yet in Central Europe, there is more um, anti-Semitism that's there. I mean, there's, there's a lot of these things go back and forth. Greece, for example, which is there, has 69% of the people have anti-Semitic views, yet Israel is in bed with Greece now over energy. So mm -hmm. there are complex situations here, but this is the real world, and you try to make the best of what it is for your interests, not always your values. You know, you know, to me personally, as someone who lived in Germany back in 2013, what's really remarkable is to see how the Holocaust narrative is so different um, in Germany and the way the memory of the Holocaust is being preser preserved there, whereas you don't see this happening in other countries, especially in the Balkans, I would say. Well, yeah, Austria is another place that doesn't want to come to totally. terms with it. Eric Mandel, thank you very much for explaining all of this. Pleasure.